new bestseller. So it means it is a very, very famous, but also very, very old symbol. And this is the only existing really pyramid with the eye. It has exactly 13 steps, like the pyramid on the one US dollar. The strange thing with this one and other artifacts found in Ecuador, that if you put black light on it, the eye shines really very, very strong. And the natural color is kind of light green and gray. And the most impressive for me was that on the bottom of the pyramid, you have here in gold inlays the Orion constellation and an unknown writing. This unknown writing we found on stones all over the world, in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Illinois, in Glossel, France, in Calabria, Italy, in Turkmenistan, in Malta, and Rex Gilroy, Gilroy has some pictures on his uh, website, and I found out that some of the stones he shows with unknown writing presents the same writing. That means there must have existed a global civilization long, long time ago. And there was only one man able to translate this language, Professor Kurt Schildmann. He was the president of the German Linguistic Association. He spoke and wrote more than 40 languages perfect. And he could translate this writing, and he called it pre-Sanskrit, because it's older than the oldest writing. And the translation of these four letters on the bottom of the pyramid was the son of the creator comes. Hopefully when he said that, something clicked. Is it not strange that people who have the job of naming celestial bodies also seem to have had esoteric information, such as the phrase on the bottom of the pyramid that we only know of as the Illuminati symbol? The comet was named as if it is announcing its own identity, I, Son. This leads me to think that this comet is important to these people, so let's continue and see where it takes us. Let's take a closer look at the comet itself to find any abnormalities. I will now cut to a clip from BP Earthwatch, who does a brilliant analysis of the comet itself. Guys, this image was the last one that we got from Hubble, and it was uh, on the video a few weeks ago. And they did an overlay of three images to get this coloration that you see in here. They used uh, blue, red, and I think the black and white filter, took the shots and overlaid them. And we came out, and they said it was a smooth image. And the video that I did where we were watching the meeting, if you remember, of the different astronomers and scientists, at the IC meeting, the uh, Comet Ison meeting, and one of the guys at the end said that the jets were irregular. They were not, uh, they were at a distinct angle from the sun. Well, <clears throat> and again, I was complaining that if they were getting shots every 15 minutes of Hubble, from Hubble, why aren't we getting more? Well, what I wanted to do was find the images that they used to make this composite. Now, when they overlaid this, they smoothed a lot of edges out. Is, was that the purpose, to make it look like one object, guys? Is that what they're doing? I want to dig a little deeper here. Now, I found the three images that they used to make this picture, and now I think I know why. I'm going to pull this over. This is the black and white one. This is from the red filter and the green filter here. I'm going to pull this black and white up, guys. Just hang in there a minute. Uh, see what we got. Now, without the overlay and what they've added in, you can see what's inside this comet or inside this uh, coma, coma haze here. You have three objects. <coughs> and this is not an object behind these two. You see how this cloud is irregular, this would not be happening. Now, this is what's called the Hubble Web Viewer, and I'm going to put it up after I load the video. You can't put links in the description until after the video is loaded, so sometimes it takes about 10 minutes to get that information under it. But uh, this is called the ISON 
web viewer or image web image viewer and uh, you notice uh, the numbers here as you move your cursor around it gives you where you're at you see that now it also has what's called invert darker and lighter you notice how they've got it real bright now this is the released image here and at this sun this star appears to be having a solar flare or coronal mass ejection out the side but let's try to get it let's just uh, darken this thing a couple times and uh, again I'm gonna link this you notice that it's starting to clear up it was overexposed the one that was released here's I sign here's your coronal mass ejection that's what's inside that coma now that looks like a comet this I don't know but again it's part of this cloud I'll pull it up you can also zoom and it will zoom very big One more time now let's go back to let's go to light and let's blur it out the way that it was when you go to the page as we lighten it up it's just increasing your uh, exposure time basically watch what happens to it you still see that uh, oblong shape inside that coma there's about the way we get it now we're going to go back dark Now remember that one scientist said some of the jets are not pointed right. Are that is that a, is that what we're looking at here, guys? Something's just not right. You, I would say this was some kind of marker or something if it was not for this cloud. Pull it up. Look at it close. This is the real image of what's inside that cloud. I'm gonna go darker. You tell me. I don't know. Heads up. So I hope we can agree this comet, if indeed it is a comet at all, has three parts which seem to be moving in formation for the lack of a better word. Now we will take a look at its orbit and see if there is any other interesting abnormalities that let us make more sense of it all. As you can see, Ison is on a highly elliptical orbit around our sun. When I saw this, it reminded me of a binary star system, which has its orbit of its two stars as follows. At the same time, it clicked that this orbital pattern had been used before in a calendar. put it to you that it was not the ancients that were the ones who were wrong with their concept of time, but it was our concept of time that has been manipulated by the Gregorian calendar from the church. Given that if all this is true, in its passing some large scale events are going to happen, let's take a look and see if there is any national exercises being carried out in the same time frame as it is passing since the US government seems to have this remarkable ability to stage exercises on the exact events that are taking place such as the bomb exercise in Boston and the hijacking exercise on 9-11. A possible emergency FEMA Region 3 alert. FEMA Region 3 consists of Washington DC, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia and West Virginia. This alert was sent to us by Senator Sheldon R. Songstadt, retired of South Dakota State. Here is what the Senator's national preparedness research turned up. FEMA purchase orders for over 14.2 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. 
FEMA purchased orders for 2 million pouches of emergency water to be delivered to FEMA Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchased orders for $13.6 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Austin by October 1st. Nine-week training course for UN peacekeepers in CONUS to learn urban warfare. They're learning urban warfare and they need to learn English and U.S. weapons systems. We're having foreign soldiers learn our U.S. weapons systems. This has been going on since the fourth week of July for 386,000 troops to be completed by October 1st. 2,800 MRAPs must be delivered to DHS by October 1st. No leave will be allowed for U.S. military from September 28th through November 5th. NORCOM yearly training for civil unrest is to be suspended until September 27th to be performed in northeast coastal areas. Date for release of QE3 report is to be moved to October 16th. All DHS agents must qualify with sidearm, shotgun, and AR-15 by September 28th. No mention of yearly less lethal qualification. The sporadic testing of GPS and communication satellites is coordinated for the very first time ever with a testing date of September 29th. POTUS mandates to FEMA and DHS concerning support for metropolitan communities dealing with the extreme climate change must be complete by October 1st. These mandates were issued during the last three weeks. Over 300 school systems in the U.S. have determined their three-day kits for each school and three-day kits for each student to take with them. All deliveries are scheduled for the month of September. All National Guard units will complete riot control and disaster assistance training during this year's annual two-week training. All units must have their training complete by September 30th. Daily testing of emergency broadcast system to begin on September 25th and run through October 2nd. Eastern-based Coast Guard units to perform massive group training usually performed in the Gulf in the Virginia and Delaware areas. This is a 10-day training mission to begin September 26th. So as they all qualify in the 10 days training, there is less than two weeks for the passing of ISON. It might be wise for you to allow your iPhone to run completely flat for this period of time, my American brothers. We all have been watching you make the same tr transitionary steps as pre-Nazi Germany for many years now. They have been building the engine bolt by bolt in front of your eyes so that you don't see. If economic hitmen had not enslaved most of the world to the US dollar, I would not feel the way about the American corpocracy and the money masters of the World Bank that control it. You're the whacking stick of the Rothschild banking cartel, and I want you to know that guns will not solve this problem. Endurance and lack of fear of death will make all the difference. As we know from the past, the men taking the orders eventually help the people if they do not found themselves as the enemy standing in the streets and moving like a school of fish around the attacks no matter what but without a word or violence will make all the executioners think as a human as they indiscriminately murder innocents maintaining silence so they have to hear the cries of the innocent people that they harm and more importantly allow them to hear their own conscience rather than reactions to the training and warfare that have been drilled into them in the end, we are all merely consciousness contained within a magnetic bubble, collectively contained within another magnetic bubble, 
collectively contained within another magnetic bubble, which is just one magnetic knot 